I am Dave Garner and I work for DeSouter Industrial Tools. It's actually been uh, 18 years now and the little video you saw was a little presentation we did last year. We um, celebrated our 100th birthday and, and as you can see in the video, it actually started from a very different product. It was artificial limbs and things like that and through the transformation of time, we are in an assembly tool company. So what we're gonna talk today about is a little bit about uh, some advances in tools, a little bit about the trends in the industry and uh, where we're going in the future. So change, change is upon us and these words were written uh, a number of years ago, but if your time to you is worth saving, then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone for the times they are changing. Those words are written by that famous assembly tool engineer we all know as Bob Dylan from the 1960s. And the times were changing then and the times have changed, they're changing now and they will continue to change, and that's what we need to embrace. So I'm gonna take this in a little bit of a different direction for this group, but we see change in everyday products, and the, the world is changing quickly for us, so I don't know if you're familiar with this product, Barbie. Does anybody know what's changing about Barbie this year? Barbie actually will be launched this year as Hello Barbie, and she's interactive. Your child can actually have a conversation with Barbie because she is, uh, connected with Wi-Fi now, and so you very well may have a situation where a child says to you, hey, I can't get Wi-Fi connection in here for my Barbie doll. But she has 8,000 things to say and actually can adapt her conversation with the child based on what the child says to her. So this is an example where a physical product and a human being are connected through this internet of things, this connectivity that we see. So this is really summed up in a new uh, premise, which is a, a idea called Industry 4.0. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with this concept. It comes out of Europe, but the basic premise is that we are in a fourth industrial revolution. Now we think of the industrial revolution, we think of olden times and steam engines and locomotives and new transportation networks and the assembly worker uh, and old factories, but um, We've seen a lot of advancement since, since then, but the concept is that there's actually been four industrial revolutions, of which the first one was the introduction of steam and water power to power the first equipment. The, some of the first equipment was uh, actually a power loom for the textile industry. That moved on into the 1800s, later 1800s, we think of the moving assembly line. And the move, first moving assembly line was actually in a meat packing plant in Cincinnati. And then that advances to what we think of with Henry Ford and the assembly line and the assembly line worker and obviously the need for advancements in tooling. That progresses through to the 1960s, 1970 era where now we have the introduction of computers and the in introduction of the PLC. And now through information systems and IT, we now can control automated processes and make huge advancements from the early part of the century. So the premise of Industry 4.0 is that we've moved beyond that, that there is actually a fourth industrial revolution right now, and it actually involves what would be called a cyber-physical system enhancing communication and human productivity. We actually have reached a level of complexity now where we are not physically connected to the workspace, but through interaction can actually improve performance and productivity. So, if you look at this on one sheet, you can kind of see the progression through time and this advancement up the right-hand side of the increase in complexity. And while many of us think of the, the automation world you know, that, that we've, we've dealt with up to now, that really is becoming a thing of the past with some of the advancements that we have. So, what does this mean for assembly tools? Well, I thought first, let's, let's look at a very common product that we're all familiar with, and that would be um, this, the cell phone. Now, obviously, we've come a little bit of a ways from this, and I actually have one of these here, the telephone. Now, some of you, depending on your age, may never have had this in your home. I can tell you just carrying it is, is, is an ergonomic issue. This was a one function device. Uh, you had to dial it. Uh, it had speed dial, you just had to dial faster. Uh, it was really good if you wanted to hang up on somebody because you could really just hang up on somebody. Other than that though, you know, really a one function product. So 
we look at the change over time to, uh, you know, carrying that around to now we're carrying something like this. And uh, obviously, huge difference uh, between the two here. You know, we used to use this, and now we use this. But one of the biggest changes is we still call it a phone for communication, but um, what are you not supposed to do with this? Don't look at it when you're driving a car, because we know that's dangerous. I'm sure this was safe, though. We are trying to read a road map when we were driving a car, and I know I come from that era of maps and books and things, trying to, trying to understand that while you're driving a car. What else can we do? This was replaced by GPS, but now GPS is actually in this device. This is a device we don't have to have any longer. If you wanted to see the weather, you had to watch television. Now you can check your phone. If you wanted to see what time it is, you don't have to wear a watch. You can check your phone. Conversely, if you wanted to listen to music, a lot of us used to walk around with a Walkman radio. Now it's right here. Same thing with a stopwatch, if you want to time something. Pictures is huge, uh, big changes in photography because you no longer have to have a separate camera, you have it on your phone, and you can carry the pictures around. You don't have to have a photo album. Same thing with video, you used to have to record videos on a video recorder or show them on a video player. You can do that all now on this device. And something simple like even a flashlight you can have on your phone. You want to make a tape recording, that's on your phone. Add up some numbers. You don't have to have the calculator because it's here. And even if you just want to write something down, you can take some notes on your phone. So if you look at all those devices and all those things, you don't have to carry around or have because through technology, things have really been simplified. So a mobile phone is not you know, what we think of as a phone anymore. It's really a, it's a smart device, it's a smartphone. And on the assembly line, we're moving towards smart tools. And through that same advancement, we can reduce the number of pieces of equipment that we need. So while we look at this, if we were gonna go buy a new phone today, we would not shop for this. Nobody would shop for this. But we find in our industry, there's still a lot of people that look for this. The spring clutch air tool, you know, was a, a very durable, Great device, similar to this rotary phone, had a spring clutch, basically you could run down to a torque, uh, you had reverse, and it was an air tool. Very common in our industry, remains very common today, but um, we're really seeing a shift from devices and tools that were single purpose to what is the multi-function tool. It can do a number of different things. That helps make us all more productive. So. A key for this, obviously, is electricity. Shifting from the air tool to the electric tool is an industry 4.0 enabler. So there's many advantages over moving to electric tools, but some of the key ones would be uh, the improvement in the environment. It's more environmentally friendly. Uh, we also have means to Im improve quality. Uh, Cost savings can be provided in a major way by moving to electric tools. And something that's very important is uh, ergonomics and flexibility. With the electric tools, we can do more things to control rundowns and operator uh, uh, torque on their arms and whatnot that can improve ergonomics. And ergonomics is very important in everything we do in the tooling industry. About uh, $20 billion a year, it's estimated by OSHA, is spent on ergonomic related issues. And these are issues where a company had to pay a claim out to one of their workers. And most of these claims, about two thirds, are for an injury to the wrist or the elbow or the shoulder. And obviously in the assembly tool world, this is something that, that has been an issue for a very long time and will continue to be an issue for a long time. But when we think of ergonomics, we think of it beyond just the tool that they hold. Ergonomics is the whole workspace and the whole workstation and how that operator has to move around in the, envir in the environment that they work in. So from our company, we're bringing ergonomic solutions uh, regularly to the workplace and some of the the basic ones, when we look at the higher torque side of things, this is a tool we've talked about in this forum in the past, but the DeSuter ePulse is a true reaction-free pulse tool that is a DC tool. There is no um, oil pulse chamber, and you can run up to 25 newton meters and literally hold that tool in the fingertips of your hand and feel no torque reaction. It's a huge advancement uh, over 
higher torque fasteners, uh, fastenings, and this will uh, actually increase to 45 Newton meters uh, in a very short time from the suitor. So we look at the high side of things, you know, when we're dealing with the higher torques, but there's also the low side of things. And new from the suitor is a tool called uh, the nano driver. This is dealing under one Newton meter. This is a tool that's from 0.04 Newton meters to point. 0.8 Newton meters, so you're dealing in inch ounces now. And while we talked about uh, this device, those very screws that it takes to put something like this together are very challenging to pick up and hold and drive, and that's exactly what this tool is designed to do to help with that ergonomic side on the low end of the torque spectrum. So, but the big move is to the electric tools and the cordless tools. How do we move into battery tools and how does that affect our workspace? Well, if we truly want to cut the cord, we move into battery solutions. And from DeSouter, we have a tool like this called the ELIT. It's a battery tool, a right angle version or a pistol version. And with a tool like this, now the operator has much easier access to their workspace. They do not have to pull that air hose around. It is adaptable. You can put different kinds of heads on this tool to uh, fit into all kinds of different applications. But um, we see this in the world I work in now, a lot of aerospace applications. A very common application is um, uh, what are called temporary fasteners. And in the aerospace factory, the operators have to install hundreds of temporary fasteners to hold a piece in place, and then they put in the real fasteners, and then they remove all of the temporary fasteners. So a ton of assembly work uh, being done by these operators, traditionally done with a pneumatic speed runner. So you can think of all these fasteners sticking out of the workspace in a very large piece and now trying to haul an air hose around to get to all of those. So the shift is now where we can move to the battery version of that tool. We take our tool, we adapt the head, and then we have a battery speed runner. So it's much easier now for this operator to move around this large part uh, without having to fight the air hose. Um, key to all of these tools is a level of intelligence. And this series of tools from DeSouter, although having a spring clutch, will still provide an operator feedback as far as a red or green light if they did their application correctly. And if, if needed, can report back to a control box that then can send a signal to the line, uh, giving it an okay or not okay if it should proceed or not. So uh, moving to really the next level, and I find this really a, a great niche product from us. This is uh, the DeSouter B-Flex, and basically what we have here is a right angle nut runner. It's fully portable. Uh, there's no cable. It's a battery tool, but it has the full transducer and uh, rotary res resolver based motor that the full DC tools have. Yet there is no cable attached to this tool and uh, you get control without the controller. So now the operator can actually see a numerical readout on their tool. They're not just looking for a red light or green light, that you get with the uh, lower level tools, but they can actually see the torque number that they have achieved. They can also see the actual angle number that they achieved. So a nice advancement there, but this is control without the controller. If one wants to move into a higher level of assembly, but not have to be tied to controllers, the cost of them or the, you know, mounting them throughout the factory, this is a great way to move to that level of tool. And there's really two levels, and when we think of ergonomics, we can dedicate this tool to do one torque, you know, with a basic tool, and some factories like that, they just want the operator to do one thing. But there's many applications where the operator has to use a number of tools to do their job. And now with the advanced version of the B-Flex, they can do up to six different parameter sets. And now, instead of having to run a bolt and then put this down and get another tool to run a bolt, in there alone, we're having an ergonomic issue of the movement around. They can keep one tool in their hand and actually do six different operations in their assembly process. So beyond that, we would move to DeSouter. Well, actually, first we would cover the pistol. Um, because uh, in this tool, uh, we've just launched this, this tool, the, EA, the B Flex version of the pistol, and now we have that same functionality in a pistol tool. So same thing, they can see their numerical readout and they can work with a pistol tool. What's really cool about this, and we talked about the telephone or the mobile phone having a light on it, now we have tools with lights on them as well to light up the workspace, but even 
and more so actually give you a red or green indicator light that's very large and easy to see for an operator as they're doing their work. So now they get feedback right there at their workspace. They don't have to look back at a controller or something to see if they got an okay on their job. And what's really important about using a pistol is operators become about 30% more productive when they can use a pistol tool. Instead of uh, having to use a right angle and fumble with the nut and bolt or whatever they're trying to fasten, uh, they actually obviously have the free hand and productivity goes up when you can use a pistol tool. Now we'll move ahead to control with the controller. So everything I just discussed here is also available in a full DC system. And now we have the controller, we can perform multiple parameter sets, uh, a variety of rundown strategies to handle really every application and uh, collect data if that needs to be done. And also now we can run multiple tools off of the same controller. So we have that ability again to move into this cyber physical workspace of people working independently but off of one controller with a number of different tools, pistols or right angles, whatever might be needed. So with that, you obviously can collect data, review statistics, look at results, and all those things. And in the past, commonly people will pull this off of a controller, or, you know, or a specific plant floor, floor or a specific assembly line. Now we can actually do this you know, in a number of places. So a lot of uh, locations have that, that torque department or the measurement people that are testing tools or that want to see results. Now we actually can do that not only in the shop floor or over the next assembly line or across town or across the state, we can do that around the world through, um, through the connectivity of the CVI software. So where's this take us? As we look at the assembly tool workspace, you know, and this is similar to something I actually spoke about last year. And last year was really talking about all the things that we can do. And just like the mobile phone now, we can see this transition into the smarter workspace. So. Um, with uh, the advancement in tools, um, we can take away something like the stack light because we're providing that light indicator right at the tool. They don't have to look at some other station to see if the job was done correctly. The same way that the tools have transducers on them, we can take away the need for that click wrench or that torque wrench to check the job. Uh, a huge improvement when using uh, DC tools. But also, what else can we remove? We can mount the barcode scanners right on the tools now. So with, the, with that improvement, now the person is holding one device, you know, instead of putting this down and reaching for another device. And while we think that might be insignificant, even if you think of a barcode scanner and maybe the need to pull a trigger on it, over the course of a week or a month or a year, that's, that's thousands of trigger pulls you may be able to save an operator, thousands of movements of grabbing another piece of equipment. So additionally, the sockets now, we're working on technology and we have it in some of our products with RFID technology. And now the socket we put on the tool actually holds the parameter set or tells the controller or the tool which parameter set to run. And through this technology, we can remove the need for socket trays. Again, a fixed location where an operator has to reach for something and put it in a particular spot and pull the next one out. Now they can do that right at their workspace. They can even keep the sockets on their belt or right at their workspace or workstation, whatever they're working on. So we can really simplify a workspace from what it's been, just like we see that with the mobile phone or the mobile device. And in some cases, as we've shown, we can take away the controller. We might not need that in many, many locations like we have before. So concept being we're moving into simplified workspaces and that's what the increase in complexity and technology does for us. We discussed this last year and DeSouter continues to work on some of these concepts and this is an operator and now the controller is what we call the DeSouter node and this is something he can actually wear right on his belt buckle, very small, but can control his uh, transducerized tool and through Google Glass now, he doesn't have to look at a set of work instructions per se, but he actually sees it. He he sees out of his glasses exactly what he's supposed to work on. And as he progresses through his uh, uh, work process, he actually will see red or green blinking if things have been done correctly or not correctly. So again, no need to turn and look at something else because he sees it right in front of what he's doing. Another system, and this is not from DeSouter, but 
We've talked to companies that do this kind of work, and we see it again, especially in aerospace or heavy equipment where you have large uh, pieces of material that need to be worked on. A, a projection system where you actually project the work instructions right onto the workpiece. And now the operator is, can follow right through with a color coding system, and the, and the um, directions are right there for what they need to do. So as they fasten each nut or bolt, or even fasten a rivet or something, they get an indicator light at that location. And this is based on having the workpiece set in a, a three-dimensional uh, X, Y, Z axis location, and it actually knows where the tool is and what it's doing. So, and these are some of the advancements we see that really help simplify things for the operator. So, looking back to what we talked about earlier, this industry 4.0 concept that you might begin to hear more about uh, in the days to come. You can see we have really are, have moved from this um, PLC level of automation where a lot of us exist currently and we are moving into this higher level of complexity that is the, that fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 concept. And this is really uh, shown by companies that are now taking over the process control. And while we at DeSouter and you can even see at the video, have been making tools for a long time. The future for us, it's a given now that we will fasten the bolt or nut correctly at the right torque, that we make a, a tool that does that well and provides a good ergonomic solution. For us now, the future is how do we control these greater processes? How do we uh, help the manufacturers at this level beyond the tool itself? We recent, recently required, acquired this company, Pivotware, and Pivotware provides these very solutions. And uh, there's a gentleman here with us at the show, and this is on display at our booth, where you can get more into information about controlling your actual production processes. But here's a brief video, just kind of goes over Pivotware and where we're going from beyond just the assembly tool that we hold in our hand. So as we started, the times, they, they really are changing. And as we said earlier, there's still a lot of people that would never use this product. But, uh, but when it comes to their assembly tools, uh, I heard a story yesterday about somebody looking at some, a variety of tools and they really settled on the traditional clutch air tool. And they're really looking at this kind of technology when they do that, when there are some really greater possibilities out there that in the long term can really improve production. So, the times are changing, they will continue to change. Uh, for the assembly tool world, um, it really is adapting to an industry 4.0 level of complexity. And uh, the development of intelligent tools by DeSouter and others that you'll see here at the assembly show, and this is very important, and the use of them by the industry will be the path for continued improvements in really four things, productivity, quality, ergonomics, and communication. So with that, that concludes our little presentation today. So I thank you very much for attending.